With the release of a new Batman movie, fans, of course, will start the age-old debates. Is this the best Batman movie to date? Where does this Bruce Wayne slash Batman rank amongst the rest? Does Robert Pattinson sparkle during this movie at all? I mean, come on, you know I couldn't resist not making a Twilight joke, right? I'm here to calm everybody's anxiety and tell you that yes, the Batman sits comfortably at the top of the list when compared to other Batman movies, and yes, Robert Pattinson is a pretty dope Batman. And no, he does a sparkle. This movie is definitely not for everybody, but the majority of Batman fans will really appreciate what Matt Reeves brought to the screen and will be really excited for the future of this Batman character. With so many iterations of Batman out there, it would have been easy for Matt Reeves and the studio to be like, hey, let's just make another action-filled adventure featuring Batman because those honestly have worked really well in the past. But Matt Reeves wanted to explore the world's greatest detective aspect of the Batman character in a way that we've never seen done on the big screen before. And what better way to do that by making the Riddler a serial killer and creating a murder mystery out of it. Now, I'm gonna say this again, this movie is absolutely not for everybody. It's a dark movie, literally. It's dark all the time and there's people getting murdered in horrendous ways and we explore a lot of adult themes and suggestions. I highly recommend that you see the Batman in theaters because this is just one of those movies that you have to experience in a theater setting because not only visually is it one of the best looking movies out there, but the sound design is incredible. There's moments during this movie where the speakers are shaking and you can feel your seat shaking and the part of the movie is so epic that you're just like man this makes the experience so much better with that being said i have a lot i want to talk about and expand upon with this review of this movie and it should go without saying that heavy spoilers are ahead if you haven't seen the movie yet you should probably watch that before you watch this video but nevertheless i have timestamps down in the description if you want to just navigate to the parts of the video that you want to watch that interest you the most but let's go ahead and get started the batman is a murder mystery featuring the world's greatest detective batman if you were expecting this to be some sort sort of high action staked movie like we got in the past, then I'm sorry to say this is definitely far from that. It purposely takes its time to build the world of Gotham, flesh out all the characters involved, and overall just introduce you to a new aspect of this Bruce Wayne and Batman character. This movie's about a serial killer being loose in the most crime-ridden city in the world, Gotham City, and Batman along with Detective Gordon must find a way to solve the case and stop this serial killer. Along the way, Batman meets and works with Selina Kyle, better known as Catwoman, and they both quickly learn that their paths are connected to each other. This is something that you quickly learn while watching this movie is that every person conveniently is connected together in some way. And I found myself in the theater saying multiple times, well, that's a coincidence. I want to talk about the length of the movie for a bit, but if I had to summarize the story in its totality just to start with, it is by far the world's shortest mini series. Three hours is a long time for a movie, but they packed a ton of information into this movie. Seriously, so much so that they probably could have made an eight part mini series and it would have been almost equally is enjoyable. And you really feel that toward the middle half of the movie. We start off with the Riddler being the predominant villain for the movie, but slowly and surely we turn our attention to Falcone and he becomes the main focus of the movie for a bit. So much so that I forgot the Riddler was even in the movie because we were focused on Falcone for so long. I think that this plays to the strengths of this movie, but also hurts it at times because everyone can relate to this, right? You're in a conversation with somebody and you want them to stop talking so you can respond, but then they always go like, and then, or, and another thing, I mean, Really, I wanna like talk for a second, okay? But essentially that's what this Batman movie does. I mean, the most glaring example is we get to the point in the movie where most of the villains are either dead or arrested at this point. I mean, Riddler's behind bars, Falcone just got killed off, so the movie should probably be naturally coming to a conclusion at some point, but Matt Reeves is like, no, wait. There's more. While the more is actually pretty cool, it just felt like the movie was never going to end at times. This movie definitely could have been shorter, but I want to play devil's advocate, and my argument is that Warner Brothers with Batman v Superman and Justice League butchered those movies and made them shorter, and they were a lot worse for it. So part of me is like, yeah, I wanted a shorter movie because I don't want to sit there for three hours, but I'm glad that we got Matt Reeves' full vision. We got a couple new things in the opening sequence of this movie that I haven't seen in a comic book movie before, and the first being that the Riddler just flat out murdered somebody immediately. My exact response in the theater was, oh crap, that's what we're doing? After that shocking and creepy opening sequence, we lead right into Bruce Wayne monologuing about the city of Gotham. And it reminded me so much of the Max Payne video game series because Max would do this pre periodically throughout the game where he would monologue about himself or something going on in the city of New York. And it really got us into the psyche of how his character is thinking about things around him. And it's clear from these monologues that he's fully embraced the Batman character and doesn't feel comfortable 
being Bruce Wayne anymore. Also, the city of Gotham is by far in the worst shape it's ever been and it's being crippled by corruption. I absolutely love this monologue style because it happens a few times throughout the movie, whether it's Bruce or even Selena Kyle, we get some glimpses into their psyche and how they're thinking about a situation. Speaking of these two, the bat and the cat are the two focal points of this movie. Their stories are both fleshed out and they both share an equal importance to the story. I mean, I've always been lukewarm on the Catwoman character in the few times we've seen her in the Batman movies, but I was actually really impressed with what they did with the Catwoman character in this movie. Also, side note, I enjoyed seeing Batman and Catwoman having their weird, strange relationship like they did in the comments and like they did in the animated series. That stood out to me a lot because I've not seen that really so far in any iterations of Catwoman and Batman on screen. The biggest thing tying these two together was Falcone because Bruce's father was associated with Falcone at some point, and then Falcone is Selena's father. When they introduced these crime bosses to this movie like Falcone, Maroni, and Penguin, I didn't really anticipate them being a big part of the movie, but Falcone in particular became an integral part to the plot. Because behind the scenes, he's in complete control of the city. He controls the police force, he controls the political offices, and basically controls a large majority of money that runs through the Renewal Fund, which is a charity created by Thomas Wayne. So it makes sense that Batman and Catwoman would find the common ground with Falcone and want to stop him. But of course, with Batman being Batman and not wanting to break his moral code and Catwoman being Catwoman with not having really a moral code, this means that there is some conflict between both of them on how to handle a situation. Also, another side note, there were so many beautifully shot moments between these two. I mean, the one that sticks out the most to me is every time they're on the construction building, for example, every single one of those shots just looks absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit and talk about the Riddler's motivations and his overall story. So to start off, to me, the Riddler is the best part of this movie. I absolutely love this jigsaw vibe that they gave the Riddler. I feel like this was the perfect iteration of this character, and I don't know why nobody has thought to explore this sooner. His sole focus is to root out all the corruption at Gotham and bring them to the light and expose them for who they really are. And he does this by finding these individuals, murdering them, or he sets them up in jigsaw level traps, and he leaves these clues and riddles behind for Batman to be able to figure out. The riddles he leaves behind are what push Batman and Gordon to explore the different levels of corruption in the political offices and the police force, and they find out that everything is basically running through the Falcone nightclub. The biggest card up his sleeve and the reason why he was trying to involve Batman specifically in all these murder investigations was because he wanted Batman to ultimately join forces with him. So one thing I couldn't figure out during this whole thing between Riddler and the Batman when they were actually finally face to face when the Riddler was in prison was whether he actually knew if Bruce Wayne was Batman. From all indications to me, I felt like he knew he was Batman, but at the same time, it's like by the end of their conversation, I didn't feel like he actually knew he was maybe just like picking at straws, so to speak, and hoping that he would just say something. I don't know, it was just interesting. I wanna say this again because it's worth repeating, this movie is heavily focused on the detective side of Batman and I absolutely love this. Yeah, it's a bit slow at times while he's investigating stuff, but I love to watch Batman work as a detective because it's just cool to see him analyzing, kind of looking around, just seeing what's going on, finding things that people aren't seeing. It's just really interesting to see his mind working without him actually saying anything. The opening crime scene laid out everything that we need to know about how Batman operates in investigation mode. He observes all the little details, like I said. He goes where the cops can't. He does things that they can't do. And more importantly, he uses his full arsenal of technology to analyze things and find little details that the cops just can't. I can't isolate my thoughts to one particular moment of Batman being the detective because there was so many that I liked, but I can generalize it by saying that I really liked the parts where he was solving the riddles because I felt like he solved them quickly, especially during that moment where he's having to help the guy figure out the code for the bomb. I thought that was a really, really cool moment. And it just seemed like his mind was just connected to the Riddler and he was thinking exactly like he was. As I mentioned in the beginning, this movie is dark literally and tonally the whole time. It reminds me so much of the Arkham video games because those games were always dark all the time. It was raining all the time. And the overall tone of the of the video games were very grim, just like this movie. One of the biggest reasons why this movie was set during the night so much is because Bruce was Batman the majority of the time and Batman typically operates at night. And in this movie, it was clear from the beginning that Bruce does not want to be Bruce Wayne on a regular basis. He'd prefer to be Batman the majority of the time. I just want to generalize this, but the dark themes in this movie were actually kind of unnerving at times. The best scene I can use to describe that is when Batman and Gordon are walking into this orphanage. It's pitch black dark, basically. They're using their flashlights. That scene felt like it was just out of a horror movie. I felt like Michael Myers was just going to bust out and just stab Batman out of nowhere. Another example is how Matt Reeves uses lighting, sound, and shadows extremely well in this movie to make things just seem a little bit more sinister. For example, whenever the criminals are seeing the bat signal pop up and they look behind him, they see this 
really dark shadow, they wonder if the bat is gonna come out of there because they fear him so much. And if the criminals are unlucky and they see the bat signal and Batman is actually there, you don't see Batman at first, you hear him. All right, so let's stick with Batman and Bruce Wayne and ask the important question, is Pattinson a good Batman? Let's start off with the positives. I would say that he's a great Batman. He absolutely nailed the character. He nailed the brooding focused look of Batman and he even added some slight emotions to the character that worked really well. Also going into the movie, I was not a huge fan of the bat suit for this movie. I didn't like the collar thing. It just, it just didn't appeal to me. But after watching the movie and seeing him move in it and work in it, it seemed super practical and I started to like the suit a little bit more. It's still not my favorite suit, but it's definitely not as bad as I thought when I was going into the movie. I mentioned it before but just seeing him come out of the shadows you can actually hear him coming out of the shadows it reminded me a lot of Mr. X and then his face and demeanor when he came out of there was just really really epic and also just as a fighter and from his physique I really did buy Pattinson as an intimidating figure yeah he wasn't as big as Batfleck but I felt like Batfleck was more or less like a culmination of him being older and more experienced and he was able to build his body and Pattinson is just kind of new and he's starting to build his body into the Batman form that we're going to see in the future oh and I'm so glad that they did not make Pattinson and use some weird Batman voice. I mean, I really did enjoy the voice changer that they used in the Snyderverse. I did not enjoy the growling and the weird stuff Christian Bale was doing in the Nolan universe. So it was nice to hear Pattinson just using his normal voice for the most part. All right, so let's talk about the mix with this character and it's mainly focused on the Bruce Wayne character. We didn't really get a lot of Bruce Wayne in this movie, but the small little bit I was kind of into, I couldn't really tell if I liked it or not, but it was okay. And from an interview that I saw with Reeves and Pattinson, they they both were in agreement that they wanted to make this Bruce Wayne seem dead inside, like he didn't want to be Bruce Wayne anymore. And I felt like they really actually accomplished that with the betrayal of Bruce Wayne in this movie. I actually found myself wanting to see him being Bruce Wayne in the world and interacting with people. And I more importantly, wanted to see a differentiation between him as Bruce and him as Batman. They felt so similar to me. Just to clarify that a little bit more, both Bruce and Batman both felt brooding and moody and, and that they were broken. And that works a little bit, but the best iterations of Bruce in my opinion were the one where we got the playboy billionaire we also had the Bruce that was interacting with Alfred and we had the Batman it was kind of nice having the three different ego altering personalities all right so let's talk about the negatives and the biggest glaring negative for me for this Batman is the fact that I felt like Batman was basically bulletproof if not invincible at times with Ben Affleck's Batman they had several scenes where they showed that his suit could deflect small arms fire and whatnot not that that was actually pretty cool but it wasn't like a rampant thing they showed it was just every so often he gets shot it would bounce off. In the Nolan films, they showed that Batman was constantly beaten and battered after a night of fighting crime, because that makes sense. He's just a human, he's getting hit all the time, and he's gonna have bruises and injuries, right? But this Batman felt like he could absorb every bit of bullet fire coming at him. He just felt like he was never injured. There's just so many scenes where he's just walking directly into gunfire. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I get that his suit can deflect bullets, but at some point, he's gotta get hit in the face or something by one of these bullets. He literally got shot at point blank range with a shotgun and he barely had a scratch. I mean, there was some damage to his chest and he was a little hobbled because it was kind of shocking from the impact, but for the most part, he was fine. And I don't know, it, just like that, the, the whole fighting aspect of Batman where he was just absorbing all this gunfire and stuff like that, it just didn't work for me in this movie. Oh, and of course the most egregious thing, he got freaking blown up by a bomb at point blank range. He didn't try to move at all. He had at least like two to three seconds where he could have turned around, ran away, but he didn't. He just stood there and took it right in the face and basically walked away with no scratches. What the heck is up with that? I don't know, just to me, it was a little bit weird that Matt Reeves wanted to have like a more realistic focus on Batman in this movie. But the one thing that they did was make him basically invincible with his suit. And it just, it just didn't work for me because all the iterations of Batman before, he had some vulnerabilities. He was showing some wear and tear throughout the movie that he was getting beat up. He was getting worn down. And this one, Pattinson didn't look like he was even phased in the slightest. All right, so what about the rest of the supporting cast for this movie? I want to say this up front and I'm going to die on this hill. Every single person in this movie was perfectly casted. From Robert Pattinson as Batman, to Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, all the way down to the people that played the twins in the nightclub. Every single person I absolutely thought they were perfect in their roles for this movie. Alfred is used very sparingly, but Andy Serkis did a really good job as Alfred. I mean, he's always done a really good job in the MCU movies, so seeing him come over and take over as Alfred in the Batman was actually really cool. I think he did a great job. More 
specifically, Alfred helped out with the more investigation side of the story. He helped out solve some of the riddles, some of the ciphers, some of the various things that needed to help solve the case. So he had little tiny roles, but they were all pretty big roles to the plot. Zoe Kravitz definitely set the standard for how to play Catwoman in a Batman movie. For someone who's never really liked the Catwoman character in Batman movies, I actually really enjoyed her iteration of Catwoman in this movie. To me, she shared the spotlight just as much as Batman at times, and I was for it because I wanted to learn more about her character and her backstory. They nailed the fact that she has some of the same beliefs and ideologies of Batman, and that's why they work well together, but ultimately when the rubber hits the road, their morals are completely different, and she's gonna do what it takes to get the job done. So seriously, bravo to Matt Reeves and Zoe Kravitz. You guys absolutely nailed it with this character. All right, Paul Dano. My goodness, I loved Paul Dano as the Riddler in this movie. I don't wanna do the whole comparison thing to Heath Ledger because I don't feel like that's fair to Paul Dano, but I will say this. I got the same feeling with him on screen like I did when I saw Heath Ledger on screen in terms of impact. You can just hear in his voice that he completely believes that he is 100% right in his approach into how to handle the corruption in Gotham. One thing that I was shocked about and I actually liked is they used him pretty sparingly and I felt like this worked best for his character because the moments he was on screen were really memorable. It still shocks me that we haven't gotten this version of the Riddler before. I mean, it's perfect, right? I mean, he's a jigsaw level serial killer. He's leaving all these clues and riddles behind for Batman. It just makes so much sense. I mean, the only iteration of Riddler that we've gotten in the past is the Jim Carrey one from the 90s in Batman Forever, but I think Paul Dano brought this character to life and made it really work in my opinion. All right, so John Turturro played Falcone in this movie, and I just enjoyed watching him on screen just because he felt like a traditional mob boss. His story was not something I really expected us to explore, and it seemed like the crime bosses were going to be filler characters and not really Really fleshed out, but nope, we went headfirst into his story and has set up some major moral decisions between Catwoman and Batman, especially since both of them lost something, right? I mean, Catwoman ultimately lost her mother as well as her friend was killed by Falcone, and then Bruce's parents were potentially killed by Falcone as well, but that was never really firmly established, so I imagine we'll finally get a resolution to that eventually, but he's dead, so I don't really know how we're gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna say this up front. I'm one of five people that had no idea Colin Farrell was playing Penguin. I was shocked when I saw his name pop up when I was looking at the cast of this movie because talk about the ultimate transformation i had no idea this was him we truthfully didn't get a lot of penguin outside of the epic car chase and that hilarious dialogue between him gordon and batman toward the end of the movie but the little bit we did get is awesome and i'm actually super interested in the hbo max show that we're going to be getting i guess maybe this year or next year i absolutely adore the buddy cop vibe that we get between gordon and batman and i think this is made perfect by jeffrey wright's portrayal as jim gordon i've never had a problem with the other people who have played detective or Commissioner Gordon in the other movies, but for some reason, no one has done as good of a job at working with Batman as this Gordon has. I like the Gordon one-liners throughout this movie. No, they weren't knee slap hilarious, but they did break the tension sometimes when we were in a particular dark moment, like when him and Batman were walking into the abandoned orphanage and Batman's like, no guns. And then Gordon is like, maybe you, but I don't live by that rule. <laughs> I don't know, that was just hilarious. All right, so now for my favorite part of the video, let's talk about the epic moments in this movie. Far and away, my favorite part of the movie was the Batmobile intro sequence. Seriously, I can't stop thinking about it. They showed a neutered version of it in the trailer and admittedly it's not that much longer than what we got in the trailer, but what, for whatever reason, it felt like it was so long, but it was absolutely epic the whole time. There's a moment towards the beginning of the movie where they zoom in on Bruce Wayne's face and he's taking off the cowl and you can see his eyes are covered in the black paint and his eyes are just bloodshot red because you can tell that he's just been out all night. He's constantly out as Batman. I don't know, that was just an epic shot and an epic moment in the movie. All the cinematography in this movie was absolutely insane. There was so many moments where I was like, wow, that was gorgeous, or man, that was an epic shot. There's seriously so many things that could be poster or picture material. I'm gonna generalize this, but the music and the score for this movie were incredible. It was like a mix of like sad, but then high paced. It just was really well done. I complained about it earlier, but that scene where the power's out and you see Batman fighting the goons and their gunshots are the only light you can see. And then at one point, both goons are just going full auto into Batman. He's just walking forward and he kicks their butt. That was a a really cool moment. Also towards the end of the movie, another epic shot was just seeing Batman with that red torch flare walking through the water and all the people were behind him kind of getting escorted out. That was just a really kind of shot that just summarized the whole movie and the kind of transformation as Batman going from this vengeance seeking character to now trying to actually help the people of Gotham. All right, so we did get one cameo and some references and suggestions to some potential adversaries for Batman in the future. I must've missed this or it went right over my head, but apparently there was a mention or reference to Hush in the movie that he exists 
exists in the universe. I'll have to look out for that next time I see it. Apparently the Court of Owls was referenced or had some sort of hints toward it being in a future movie as well. But the biggest one is probably the Joker scene towards the end of the movie. And personally, I didn't really like that they added him into the movie. I just felt like this movie already was information overload and covered so much that we just didn't need a Joker cameo in there. It just broaches so many questions and Matt Reeves in an interview even said that the Joker isn't even planned to be in the next movie so why would we have a cameo for him? Alright so my final thoughts are the Batman is not a perfect movie but it's the perfect way to bring back the Batman solo movie experience. I absolutely love the Nolan trilogy but I did not want to see that all over again. I am grateful that Matt Reeves is at the helm because he clearly wants to tell different Batman stories and take this character in a direction that we've never seen before. I didn't love how Batman was invincible essentially at times and I did not love how the story felt a little too long at times but outside of that I am completely satisfied with this movie. I highly recommend that you see the Batman and personally I feel like that those two small little minor details to me are completely overshadowed by the fact that this movie is just absolutely incredible and Matt Reeves you nailed it. Alright so what are your thoughts? Have you seen the Batman? Are you excited for the future of where Matt Reeves is going to take this character? Let me know down in the comments below. But alright that's it. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.